Hey everyone, welcome back to the Psychedelic Cherry. I'm Mae McDonough as always. Today is our Soldering 101 video. I'm very excited about this one. Uh, it was requested by someone in the She Shreds forum and uh, it's a really good video. Good one to wrap the year up with. So without any further ado, let's get right into the video. Let's talk about soldering. <laughs> So from the get-go, obviously you're going to need a soldering pen. Now, <clears throat> there are many sorts of soldering pens. There are portable, wireless, butane-fueled pens. There are high-end professional pens. But I highly recommend for, for small, hands-on electronics, particularly making pedals or um, repairing XLR cables, etc., you really only need the basic wall plug pen. So this is what my pen looks like. It is not hot right now. That's why I can touch the tip. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> it basically looks like this. It is a simple stem that you use to hold like this and a tip which is replaceable. I just take it off like this. You will go through quite a few tips in your time soldering. When they get blunt uh, it becomes very difficult to solder small things like through holes and certainly smaller things like surface mount resistors. So you do want to make sure before you start soldering that you're using a good sharp tip. Beyond that, it has this nice little cable that goes into the wall. Now, these typically run about 600 degree Fahrenheit. That is the proper um, heat for doing simple things like uh, burning solder to electronics. Now once you have your uh, beautiful soldering pen stand, you're also going to notice that inside the stand is either a sponge already um, prepackaged or a nice square spot to place your sponge. The purpose of this is simply to have somewhere to wipe your solder off um, to clean the tip of your pen. Another tool we have at our disposal um, is one of these beautiful tip cleaners. You take one of these and you just take your hot tipped soldering pen and um, as nature intended, you just kind of insert it in and out until it's clean. If you want to go out and get one of these, uh, please do. Although I don't think you need to start with it. In fact, I think it's kind of a needless buy because I rarely use it myself. That's mostly what you need to know about the pen itself. Let's get into uh, your solder. Typically you want to use something called rosin core solder. Um, they come in lots of different widths and sizes. Let's see, mine is uh, 0.5 millimeters. Now I prefer it at 0.5, it's quite thin. And the reason I prefer it at that uh, width is simply because when it's thinner, it can really get into those holes um, and not junk up your pen or junk up your board. So <clears throat> once you have your solder, there are a couple things that I recommend you have. Something called desoldering wick, which looks like this. Desoldering wick is this copper wick that looks like that. Um, and when you apply this wick to the top of a joint and you apply a hot pen over that, it absorbs the wick. So, or I'm sorry, it absorbs the solder. Another thing, uh, some people recommend, where is it? Is one of these desoldering uh, suckers. Uh, essentially, uh, if you've ever worked a turkey baster before, uh, you know what this does because when you squeeze it, it creates the opposite of a vacuum such that when you release the pressure, this vacuums up any solder, it's hot solder that it's next to. Although, frankly, I've never seen one of these really do a good job, so fuck them. So let's get into the actual soldering process. 
All right, so I have my soldering iron here pretty good and hot. It's been plugged in for about five minutes. And uh, I have a circuit board here with a capacitor strung through two of the through holes. And we're gonna go ahead and break down exactly how to solder a through hole component. We're going to start by simply doing a process called tinning to the very tip of the soldering iron. And that's by simply placing a little bit of this solder on the tip of the iron itself. Once we have that, we simply place the tip to the pad and the metal object that is being soldered. And then we feed a little bit of solder to it until the entire pad is covered. Then we go ahead and wipe off our pen on the sponge, place it away safely so that we don't burn ourselves. So as you can see, it's still quite shiny, which is good. It covers the entire pad, uh, which is good. If you saw a very blunt um, bit of solder or if it looked brown in any way, uh, if it looked burnt, that would be a good reason to remove the solder and do it again. If the solder didn't completely cover the pad, that would be good reason to add more solder. Uh, but this one looks good, so we're gonna move on to the next one, just so you can get a second example here. We're gonna do it again. Uh, a little bit to the tip of the soldering pen, and touch that to the metal, and then just feed the solder inward, clean the pen, and there you have it. Now you have both ends of this capacitor soldered into the circuit board. Now, let's say that I need to remove this component. Uh, for whatever reason, I put it in maybe with the wrong polarity, or uh, I just put the wrong component in the wrong place. Well, a great way to remove the component rather than removing the solder is to add a small amount of fresh solder and then pull. Um, as you can see, as you reheat it, the solder melts and the component comes right out. Now, you are left, of course, though, with these soldering, uh, or I'm sorry, with these pads that are completely filled with solder, which doesn't make for a good scenario when putting the proper piece into those pads. So now you need to remove the solder. So how do we do that? Well, we take something like this, some nice desoldering wick. Take that so desoldering wick, place it on top of the solder that needs to be removed. Place your soldering pen down. I give it a gentle nudge until I see this desoldering wick absorbing it. And then you can see now that top pad is indeed a hole again. Now, one example of a scenario in which you want to use the tinning process is soldering your LED to a wire. So once you have the rubber stripped off of the wire, of course, you want to twist the exposed wire. So we're going to do a process called tinning. Now tinning is where you take a piece of solder like this and you take your soldering iron and you melt a little bit of solder to whatever it is you're putting together. So as you can see, I just put a small thin layer of solder directly onto the lead of this LED. I'm gonna do the same to the very tip of this wire. And when I go to place them together, I hardly need any extra solder at all because the solder wants to stick to each of them. And once it dries or once it cools, they stick together quite easily. Uh, what if we're dealing with a scenario where you're 
uh, putting wire or components into lugs like those on a potentiometer or the lugs on a foot switch? Well, it's a very similar process. Uh, stick it in your hand helper here, guy. And then we're going to take some solder and we're just going to fill the hole inside each lug with solder. Touch the soldering iron and feed the solder until, this is a big lug, as you can see, um, the hole is now filled. Now once this hole is filled, careful it's still quite hot, tin the tip, okay. Now it's as simple as sticking this right into the hole of the lug and letting go and voila now your potentiometer is wired all right so that is your basic class 101 on soldering um, i hope it's been informative and thorough if you have any further questions please feel free to leave them in the comments i try to get back to everyone who comments um, don't forget to share and subscribe so that we can get to a thousand subscribers and really start generating regular content for you. If you have any suggestions or any questions, any videos you would like me to make you, I would happily oblige. So just leave it in the comments. And uh, last but not least, don't forget to hit that bell. It's a new feature on YouTube and it'll make sure that you get notified when I make new material for you. I'm Mae McDonough. This is the Psychedelic Cherry. Thanks for watching.